Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder Enhanced Set Guide. We have a Rowdy Rogue, a class that I've never covered before and is quite unique. You'll get easy access to all of the vital strike feats for the most absurd damage possible, especially on critical hits. We are talking about more than 3000 damage per attack. And while vital strike limits you to just a single attack, this build has plenty of ways of easily overcoming that as you'll get lots and lots of attacks whenever you kill an enemy, and also two attacks of opportunity, especially when boosted by the massive critical range, the Trickster Mythic Path can provide not only your own Rowdy Rogue, but also all of your allies. Your Rowdy Rogue alone will have 55% critical hit chance, even up to 100% with Trickster. Your allies can also achieve as high critical chance, and the best part is whenever they get a critical hit, you will get free attacks of opportunity for even more attacks, completely bypassing the limitation of Vital Strike. So to put it simply, this build needs only hit the enemy once to pretty much explode all of the surrounding enemies, but you can still drown them in highly powerful attacks regardless. So let's get started with our Vital Strike Rowdy Rogue build. Alright, so Rowdy Rogue is quite the unique archetype. For starters, you'll get all of the Vital Strike line of feats added for free, and get this much earlier than what you would otherwise, even with a high base attack bonus class like a fighter. For example, at level 1 you already have the normal Vital Strike feat, the improved at level 6, and the greater one at level 11. The Vital Strike line of feats is tied to your base attack bonus progression, so even as a fighter you would only be able to get the first at level 6, the second at level 11, and the last one only at level 16. Because rogues are medium base attack bonus classes, it would take them way later to get any of these feats. So that's a win for us. Vital Strike, of course, lets you achieve the ultimate damage possible, especially on critical hits. The main downside being it limits you to just a standard action per round, so just one attack. But we'll have many ways of overcoming that and getting lots of extra attacks too. Rowdy Rogue also gets martial weapons proficiency for free at level 1, which is great to equip almost any weapon in the game. And as far as the downsides, there aren't really that many, I mean, they lose free weapon finesse, also evasion and finesse training, which doesn't really matter, we can just go high strength and hoax smash the enemies into submission with our vital strikes anyways. You still retain all of the amazing rogue talents, which make the build quite versatile, because just like a fighter, you have lots of extra feats. The talents can be used, well, for either talents or, as combat trick, more bonus feats. Last but not least, the Rowdy Rogue has the Vital Force unique class ability that lets them achieve even higher damage through their Vital Strikes. After all, whenever you hit a target with Vital Strike, you'll deal an additional 2d6 damage per sneak attack dice you have. And as a rogue, you have lots of it, 10. Even more as a trickster rogue, as you're about to see. For race, I'll be going with human, I really like humans as always, for the extra feat at level 1, for higher power early game. But this build eventually will get an abundance of feats, thanks to the rogue extra talents, so you can truly go with any race you want. For background, the classic street urchin and pickpocket, after all we are a rogue for once. For stats, strength is our main attribute, after all we don't get finesse and stuff. You'll want 20 strength actually, because as a trickster rogue we can increase the enhancement of our gear. I would also start with 14 constitution, it's always nice to have a healthy layer of hit points. You might as well dump charisma because, to be fair, it does nothing for your build overall. This way you can start with 14 dexterity and 12 wisdom. Dexterity will help us with some of the classic rogue skills, plus the more attacks of opportunity we get, the more free hits we get too, despite the vital strike limitation. If you don't want to dump your charisma so low, well, just go for 12 dexterity and 10 wisdom and 10 charisma. As far as skill points, Athletics is your main stat. It not only has synergy with Trickster, as I'll show you later on, for even more attack bonus and damage. And well, we are a strength-focused character. Besides that, I would just go for the classic rogue skills, Mobility, Trickery and Stealth, even if we don't have high dexterity. We will be getting enough bonuses from gear and so on, that we'll get decent enough scores in these. I wouldn't really bother with use magic device, but it is something you can go for if you want. Even with a penalty to charisma, you can still achieve more than enough eventually to cast any scrolls for spells from classes. Alright, so as far as our level 1 feats, power attack first and cleave. 
Power attack will highly increase your damage eventually, especially with the mythic version of Vital Strike later on, as will be two-handing. And as far as cleave, by itself it does nothing for our build because it costs a standard action, which is exactly the same as Vital Strike and you are limited to just one. However, cleave is essential for the cleaving finish line of feats, which will work as another way of increasing the number of attacks we get per round even with Vital Strike. For Deity, since we are going with Trickster and it that allows the chaotic alignments, Caden is a pretty fun one, and then, well, I would go with Chaotic Good or Chaotic Neutral. For level 2, Combat Streak, and then Cleaving Finish. This way, just at level 2, we will already have 2 attacks per round. One from our Vital Strike, which will most likely kill the enemy, especially early game. And after that, we'll get a free hit against a nearby target through Cleaving Finish. As always, I'm all about fun abilities and power even at early levels. For level 3, go with Improved Initiative. The higher your initiative, well, the better for you, because you can then activate Vital Strike and the Cleaving Finish line of feats before the enemies can even react. Plus, through higher initiative, you also catch them flat-footed for the first round of battle, which means way higher chances of hitting them. At level 4, be sure to increase Strength, which is also what you should increase on all of the other levels. For your level 4 talent, I would go with Slippery Mind, it lets you add your dexterity modifier as a bonus to will saving throws against mind affecting spells. Getting hit with mind affecting conditions early game, mid game too can be very annoying, late game you have ways of becoming immune to them. As I said before, even if our dexterity won't be that high, we'll get loads of bonuses through gear and other boosts too, to make this worth. For level 5, Combat Reflexes. This will enhance your attacks of opportunity, you can even perform them while flat footed, so if you roll low on initiative. And well, attacks of opportunity are another way of overcoming the main weakness of Vital Strike limiting you to just one attack. For level 6, the choice is very simple, Combat Streak and the highly OP Outflank. As always, it's a must have for any melee character. With this, whenever our allies get a critical hit against the target, our Rowdy Rogue will get a free hit against them. This way we'll be able to get lots of extra free attacks per round, despite the Vital Strike limitation. For level 7, I would go with Great Cleave. Just like the normal cleave by the photo doesn't do anything, but you need it to get improved cleaving finish later on. Which gives us unlimited uses of cleaving finish, so honestly you hit the enemy once, and you can pretty much kill all of the nearby enemies. For level 8, Combat Streak, and a highly powerful Lunge feat to add even better reach to our Rowdy Rogue. The higher your reach, the longer the distance you can put between yourself and the enemy, while still retaining the ability to attack them at melee. This also has great synergy with the Cleaving Finish line of feats, because this way, the enemy packs won't need to be as close to each other while you cleave through their ranks. For level 9, Improved Cleaving Finish at last. For level 10, we get our first Advanced Rogue Talent, and ideally, you want to go for Opportunist. Opportunist pretty much gives you an extra attack per round. Whenever an ally hits an enemy at melee, once per round, you'll get to make a free attack of opportunity against them. It's just yet another way of getting more attacks, instead of being limited to just one through Vital Strike. For level 11, at last, we can get Improved Critical, which highly increases the power of any Vital Strike build. I'll personally be going with the Grave Singer Great Axe, because to be fair, it is the weapon that has the highest critical damage with the highest critical range. I really don't think there's anything better for this build in particular. Especially since if you want to see the Vital Strike damage fly, you really need both high critical damage and chance. Plus, it is exactly at this point that you can craft the Grave Singer Axe anyways. I already have a guide for it as it is a Crusade Relic, you can check to the side here or in the pinned comments down below. Now, from level 12 onwards, Rowdy Rogue doesn't really give you much. The Rogue Capstone Ability Master Strike is rather useless, and we can get more talents and sneak attack from another class, which is way better now, since we already have the best Greater Vital Strike. Ideally, what you want to do now is multi-class into Alchemist and Vivisectionist. This way, we still keep our amazing sneak attack progression and the extra Rogue feats. Plus, of course, the highly OP mutagen ability, and you even get some spellcasting too. It's a win-win-win. For alchemist spells, remember you can learn them through scrolls, right? So you don't need to necessarily pick them at level up. But true strike and shield will be your best friends. The other ones won't really matter much at this point. Something like enlarge, cure light wounds, and that's it. 
Now, as with any trickster build, at around level 12, you can already achieve Mythic 4. You'll have to skip some time, probably, but, you know, it can be done. Or you can just do it at level 13 too, but anyways. Be sure, at this point, to get Mythic 4 as a trickster to qualify for the special critical feats to Perception rank 2. And this is where the fun part starts. The first special trickster critical feat, and then, as a rogue, well, a vivisection is bonus talent, we can get the second one right here. So right at this point, we'll already have 11 to 20 critical chance with our X for really big damage with our attacks through Vital Strike and even attacks of opportunity too. So that's 50% critical chance. For level 15, the last Trickster special critical feat this time to increase our critical damage even further. Then, as a bonus talent, I'd go for Combat Trick and Weapon Focus into Great X. It is true that I'll be delaying the Shattered Defenses package for later with this build, I just don't really think it needs it. You'll have more than enough bonuses to make up for that. For more Alchemy spells, might as well go with False Life. And then, Animal Aspect. For level 17, well, this is when I would at last pick Dazzling Display. And then, Shattered Defenses. You can pick anything you want here, as always, you can learn it from Scrolls too. For your first level 3 spell, you might as well go with haste. Even if it's super late in the game, the more characters that can spam haste, the better for you. Your level 19 feat can be anything you want. But ideally, you would go for meta magic, completely normal spell. Because this will give you extra spellbook flexibility when it comes to the trickster spells, including extra casts of the most OP trickster spell of them all. Trick Fate for, well, 100% critical chance with all attacks. Then you have two choices as your medical discovery. You can go with Infusion if you want to cast some of your Alchemist buff on allies, it's just that, well, it's kinda late by now. Otherwise, Combat Trick and I would just go for Blind Fight. This can help us hit some enemies with concealment sources that aren't bypassed by the true seeing buff. Any spell here like Displacement. And for level 20, anything too. Alright, now let us cover Mythic Progression for our Rowdy Rogue Trickster. For your first Ascension ability, Close to the Abyss is actually useless for you, because the extra attack won't really work with Vital Strike. You can go with Instrument of Freedom if you want to buff your allies' damage with Holy, Close to the Heavens to heal allies, or my preferred choice is, well, the Trickster special first Ascension, bit of fun. This way you can get a pretty big rare bonus to your skill checks, all of them. For your first mythic ability, if you were playing on unfair, you might consider less than first as usual, it's just that this character will have reach from his weapon, from lunge, from size spells, so chances are they won't really be getting hit at all, even at melee. I would much rather pick always a chance. Right now, for a vital strike build, the reason is simple. You are limited to just one vital strike per round, right? If you roll a 1, you'll miss, no matter how high your attack bonus is, because 1 is an automatic failure. With always a chance, we can overcome that, so no more missing on 1s. For Mythic level 2, Mythic Vital Strike is a given. This is what makes your Vital Strike damage become really high. For Mythic 3, the classic Ever Ready, remember that you can and should make attacks of opportunity as a Vital Strike build to overcome its main attack limitation. As far as your first Mythic trick, Please remember that I already have a trickster guide where I cover each one in depth, so for now I'll keep it simple, as usual. Arcana 1, which lets you find gear of all sorts with higher enhancement bonus. It doesn't just work for weapons and armor, even belts and headbands too. As for Mythic 4, the classic Mythic Critical. <laughs> and don't forget, Perception rank 1 and 2 right here to qualify for the special trickster critical feats. For Mythic 5, well, there's always last 10 as I said before. Otherwise, you can also go with Abundant Casting, as Alchemists still get some pretty powerful low-level spells, even if you get them late, but at this point you'll have some already. Even just at level 1, spells like True Strike can guarantee your Vital Strike will hit, no matter what enemy you're facing, and you can prep buff with it before battle, by the way. Then be sure to pick Athletics rank 1 here. Athletics will help us avoid enemy debuffs or crowd control spells, but the last Athletics greater trick is the best, which we'll be getting later on. As far as Mythic level 6, Mythic Power Attack for even higher damage. And then, Knowledge World rank 1, plus Athletics rank 2. For Mythic 7, well, you might as well go for last 10 if you didn't pick it before. This build isn't as reliant on Mythic abilities. And then, Lore Religion rank 1, and Athletics rank 3 at last, to set our base attack bonus to the max, just like a fighter, 
for even higher power attack damage, despite we being just a rogue and alchemist. As far as Mythic 8, Mythic Initiative, to guarantee we go first, even against the Demon Lord. Then Lord Nature rank 1, and World rank 2 for even higher critical chance, so now we have 55% critical chance. As far as Mythic 9, you can truly pick any Mythic ability you want. Truth be told, the ones we have left don't matter much for us. I mean, if you want higher AC, go with Archmage Armor. As far as Rupture, Restraints and Unstoppable, well, through the Athletic Tricks, we'll always be making saves against enemy debuffs and crowd control effects. There's Unrelenting Assault too, it's just that when it comes to Vital Strike, you're basically destroying everything in one round anyways. For another lesser trick, you can pick anything here, it doesn't really matter much, like Stealth 1. And then Lord Religion rank 2. This way we can choose two domains for our character. Artifice is one of my favorite ones because it lets you cast the Lead Blaze spell, which means even higher weapon damage, does more Vital Strike damage too. And the other choice is up to you, I mean you can always pick Animal if you want a pet. <laughs> It's super late, sure, at Mythic 9, but hey, pets are OP no matter what point of the game you are at. The Law Domain has some pretty amusing qualities for a Trickster too. First, there's the irony, of course, in being a chaotic Trickster with the Law Domain. But second, the Touch of Law ability can let you achieve even more critical hits. After all, for one round, whenever you roll the dice, it will become an 11. And remember, 11 is enough for us to get a critical hit anyways. The Staff of Order ability is extremely powerful too, I have recently covered it in my How to Upgrade and Enchant Your Weapons to the Max guide. Well, it will add the Axiomatic property, which means extra damage, irresistible by the way, against chaotic creatures like all demons. You also get more spells from these domains, it's just that they don't really matter that much compared to, let's say, Lead Blades. As far as Mythic 10, you can pick anything you want. I would just go for Mythic Sneak Attacker for even more Vital Strike damage. Then as a greater mythic trick, you can go for world 3, which lets you acquire any feat without the prerequisites, but it does require you to, you know, respect your allies, because at this point everyone will be at max level. And there's also lore religion 3 for even more domains, which can add a lot of versatility to your character. Alright, now let's get into gear for our rowdy rogue trickster. For amulet, as always, Valexis is the best, for the extra bonus to strength. For armor, you can only equip light armor as a rogue. The thing is, armor class doesn't really matter for us, although we can achieve a decent amount, since we have reach to attack from safety. Ideally, I would just go for Haramakis that have decent passives like Divine Guidance for a plus 4 sacred bonus to saving throws. There's also gear that boosts your stealth for when traveling through the world map to avoid random encounter ambushes. And if you do want the armor class, well, just go with Mithril Chain Shirts. For shirts, Wandering Coleman is by far the best for the extra boost to attacks of opportunity. When it comes to belts, well, first belts of strength, but eventually you just want all physical scores to the max. For gloves, it's pretty simple, ultimately gloves of the death dealer for even higher sneak attack damage. For boots, you don't necessarily need Ronex Sacrifice since we aren't really a dexterity based character, but it can help increase your rogue skills despite you not having high dexterity. For helmets, we don't really need any mental stat whatsoever, but for the start you can go with Headbands of Wisdom so you aren't as hit by enemy mind affecting spells and abilities. Eventually just the Hat of the Bitter End for the best boost to AB. For Goggles, Piercing Gaze as always for the extra boost to damage and AB against outsiders. For Cloaks, sadly the Trickster Mythic Cloak is rather poor, if not garbage. So just go with Cloaks of Resistance that have the highest modifier possible. For Rings, as always the Ring of Triumphant Advance is a must have for pretty much any build to double morale bonuses, and since we are two-handing, the Ring of Imminent Demise, for a nice competence boost that does stack, actually. As far as braces, later abrupt onslaught for the extra sneak attack, which does stack with Death Dealer. Now let's get into weapons and quick slots. For weapons, for the start of the game, so chapter 1, I recommend you keep two glaives. Glaives are rich weapons, which mean you can attack from safety early on without bothering for armor class. Plus, there are plenty of powerful glaives in the early chapters of the game, 1 and 2. Speaking about chapter 2, you can also go with the Wide Sweep Scythe, as by then you'll already have reach to the Lunge Feet and Size Enhanced spells, or just stick with glaives and bardishes. Now, from chapter 3 on Mars is when you absolutely must go into Grave Singer. Scythes, for example, have way higher critical damage, but their critical range is awful compared to Grave Singer or other weapons like Falchions, Scimitars and Rapiers. For quick slots, 
an extend meta magic rod. It has to be a normal extend, so you can use completely normal spell to reduce the level of trick fate, and then double its duration. A greater quicken meta magic rod, but a quicken also works. Just if you want to cast trick fate in battle and still retain the ability to use vital strike or attack. But honestly, because it has decent duration, I mean, even by default, it's three rounds. You can easily pre buff with it. The lucky dice, I think, is rather fitting for a trickster character. Jar Segax for even more damage. And as usual, the signet of Hauser Spertilio to increase any skill of choice by plus five circumstance. Don't forget that even though this build doesn't get a pet, although you can get one from the trickster religion trick, you can just use the Triceratops statuette for Bismuth, the dinosaur companion. Also, the Imp Familiar to grant you very rare profane bonuses to trickery and stealth if you went with these skills. Alright, so this was it for my Rowdy Rogue Guide. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends.